Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be having my good friend from high school, Helena Day Clausen, on the show. Uh, When we were in high school, we were on the wrestling team. She was the only girl on the wrestling team that one particular year, and um, she was a really, uh, she was a really cool girl. Um, She was uh, very tough, very tomboyish, strong. Um, She uh, was really, really cool. I always liked the cut of her jib and stuff. She was always um, very supportive on the wrestling team, and. um, just all around awesome, and I'm going to have her on today and stuff. Funny thing is, um, in 2000, from 2007 to 2009, I also um, worked at an English pub uh, with her dad um, in San Mateo, The Swinging Door, which um, I've had people on the show before uh, associated with that place today and stuff. And uh, yeah, so today I'm going to talk to Helena, and it's going to be pretty good and stuff. Uh, Helena is really, really cool. I, I just can't describe how cool she is. Um, that's about all I can say about Helena. So, yeah, she should be calling me any minute now. And it's going to be pretty cool. The key word for today's show is cool. I hate to go Sesame Street on you today, but that's all I can say because Helena is cool. All right, so she should be calling me any moment now. Hi, Helena. Hi, Tommy. Hey, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing all right. And yourself? Uh, I'm okay, so-so. Just like you, I'm just waking up. Well, you know, it's a beautiful Tuesday. Yep. Beautiful Tuesday. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, what's new? What's new? Well, um, well, it's, uh, about a week until I go on a vacation, which is very exciting for me. Oh, me too. I haven't been on a vacation in about five years, so this is a big deal. Wow, where are you going? We're going up to Canada to visit some friends. But uh, I have a young child now who's just turning six, and uh, we did not travel when he was a young boy. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'll be in the Bay Area all next week. I'm actually heading down there at the beginning of September for a wedding. You know, still have friends in the area. Oh, I'll be back. Oh, I'll, I'll be back there first week of September. And stuff. I got events to attend uh, down there and stuff next weekend, first week of September. And I'm pretty excited because I'm just fucking bored over here in uh, Reading. You got some gigs back in the Bay? Not, not comedy gigs per se. I mean, I'll go to a couple open mics when I'm up there, but um, I just. Uh, the first uh, uh, one I'm going to next week, um, I got. Uh, Comic Con uh, to go to in Santa Clara, and then uh, that week in um, that week, first week of September, I'll be attending um, a movie screening with a Q and A up there. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah, it is. I'm pretty excited. I just down here, the the energy is pretty negative, and it's pretty hot up here. And we just got done with fires that were going on. Yeah, uh, most of California is pretty smoky at the moment, huh? Yeah, we had uh, to evacuate and everything. A um, couple weeks ago, had to ev- evacuate for the whole weekend. And I was just so glad when it was over. But then last weekend, my aunt had to evacuate uh, where she's at over in Bernie. Yeah, the fires are really devastating. <laughs> Pretty fucking devastating, yes, I have to say. 
So, uh, so yeah, you and I were on the wrestling team together in high school, and I just remember those crazy times so so badly, you know. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I remember times back on the team, and it's more like you know, you just kind of movie flashbacks and it is real life. I know, it's so crazy. You think about how you got through it, you know? No, I don't. I don't know how I got through it. <laughs> yeah, I mean... A whole lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Well, the, uh, well, the blood and sweat, yes. Tears, eh... I mean, I, I didn't start crying that much until after um, I left high school and stuff. And I, I had to take care of my grandma for like nine months until she passed. And then that's when the tears came for me. Yeah, I felt like I got beat up a bit more. You getting beat up? Really? Mm-hmm. got injured quite a few times. Oh yeah, getting injured, yes, but like not like an actual fight, fight, right? Um, I'm not. I wasn't really the fist brawling type, but my nice fights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were. The, I mean that that one year on on the team. I remember you were. Yeah, I mean you were the only girl on our team that year, and you were a tough girl. Boy, so yeah, uh, tough girl. I don't know. I mean, just me, but well, uh, I mean, the team was always an important part of my life. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you weren't like, um, you know, girly girl uh, to the point, you know, where you wouldn't be on the team or anything like that, is what is what I'm trying to say, you know. Yeah, but it was a it was a crazy time though, and you know I tried you know I tried to play football sophomore year, and I wasn't self reliant yet to take the bus, and so um, uh, Mr. Andrews had suggested that I join the wrestling team um, in the meantime and stuff, and that's what I did, and it was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be, but. I'm glad I made it through that season because, oh my God, it was just the most exercising I had ever done in my entire life up to that point. Everyone was very surprised, actually. You were able to stick it out. With the wrestling tryouts every year, we have about the 60% dropout rate. So we kind of eye all the new recruits and um, kind of take bets on who was going to actually stick it out. Because it's not a matter of skill at that point. It's a matter of being able to run the whatever six miles that we do as a warm-up or whatever. And not quit. <laughs> yeah. It was, um, it, was, it, was, it was really funny because, uh, God, we had so many people um, drop out right in the beginning of that year. And that was probably the smallest team in the school's history that year. We were always small. I mean, we never had a full team. You, you, you guys kind of did senior year, kind of. Okay, well, if we were able to field the full varsity team, we weren't able to field the full JV team. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I, God, yeah. Every Everybody except me was, in, was, was pretty much in, in varsity that one year. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's because, you know, we weren't going to score any points otherwise. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was just a funny, funny time. Uh, but it was, it was, it was, it was fun for the most part and stuff. It was, it was fun. And every time I, every time I run into coach, I always run into him at, at a rock concert, always. Oh, yeah. He's still around? I mean, I haven't seen him since high school, so... Yep, he's still around. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah. Still around, hasn't changed, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, 
Well, the next time you do run into him, you can give him my regards. I sure will. I, I can't remember the last time I saw him. Maybe it's been about maybe two or three years and stuff. But, yeah, I used to run into him all the time at concerts. I remember the first time I saw him after high school, I went to go see a, I went to go see uh, a production of To Kill a Mockingbird at San Mateo High around 2007. That was the first time I'd seen him in a long time and stuff. And then starting from then on, I'd run into him and stuff at concerts and stuff. Mm hmm. Well, by that, that was from coach. Yeah. Well, by that time, um, Renee's dad, Angel, was coaching and stuff. Well, he only coached for last year. Yeah. I wonder if he's still alive. I'm not sure. Lee Allen, my coach at that Skyline College, passed away a few years ago. Mm hmm. And that was uh, sad, but uh, he left us behind a uh, pretty great legacy. Mm-hmm. Do you know whatever happened to Redmond? I do not know. I'll be honest. After high school, I kind of just ditched out and left and tried to just start new. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just, uh, I was, I was just uh, here and there you know, running into people and stuff, but, yeah, for, yeah, for the most part, there's a lot, there's a lot of people, I, like, wonder, like, what the hell happened to them and stuff. Well, I mean, that's what high school reunions are for, right? Yeah, the, the, I went to many high school reunions, and there was a lot of people I did not see, especially at ours, uh, when I went in 2011, there was maybe... There was maybe sixty uh, uh, people in our whole class there, and when they were doing the announce, when they were announcing names for the time capsule and everything, about about ninety percent of the class was not there. Yeah, well, I'll be honest. Ten year, I was in the army, and didn't even think about it. Like it was, you know, you're being constantly sent places and drills and everything, and the year doesn't really click in your head to 10 years. Although I am planning on 10 to 20 years, so I guess that's something. Yeah, we'll see where I am uh, for the 20 year. <laughs> I, I actually had more fun at the Class of 02 uh, reunion the next year. Um, I went with my friend Anna Marie, who was a year younger than us, and uh, I had a lot more fun at that one. And... I saw a lot, I saw a lot I saw a lot more people I wanted to see at that one and there was a there was a, almost half the class for that one was there. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. And um not really sure what to expect for the 20 year but kind of decided I'm going to go. So No, oh, that's good. One of them get you know roped in at work completely. So Mm hmm. Yeah, there's um, there's a there's there's only like one teacher left at San Mateo from when we were there, and there's like nobody else left over there. Well, I mean, teachers are gonna get older, right? It's been twenty years. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember Mrs. Iraheta? I do. Yeah, uh, about a year ago, just before I moved, uh, I had lunch with her, and oh my god, she was so cool, and I lost count of how many times she said fuck during the whole conversation. She was awesome. <laughs> Not restricted by school protocol anymore. Yep, and uh, she admitted to me that uh, she used to smoke pot all the time, and... I was just like, wow, I, I just like, I, I love finding out the dark secrets of, of teachers. And I have uh, uncovered a few of them 
after um, seeing some of them after high school. And, when, yeah. When they can openly share it. Yeah, when they can openly share it. It's exactly right. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. Um, any uh, any good uh, sex stories? <laughs> I'm willing to share. I'm willing to share. Do you, uh, what, what do you uh, what do you think about uh, the female G spot? Um, hard to reach, pleasurable. Hard to reach, pleasurable. Wow, I've never seen it. I've never heard it summed up that way in such short terms. I've had some guests. I've had some guests on the show. They just uh, go into a long rant about it, you know, saying they don't think that um, they either think it doesn't exist or that they um, or for some strange reason, they don't uh, like uh, theirs pleasured. They like they they rather have just uh, clitoral stimulation. Well, I mean, every woman is going to be different. Right. And I don't know about other women, but. Definitely explore your own body and figure out what you like so that you can help your partner out. Just everything will be happier when you both are on the same page. Mm-hmm. I agree with you on that one. Yeah. I, re- I remember the first time I had heard about the G Spot was in a movie uh, from the 80s that I saw when I was like 15. And when I had um, uh, the, when I had the actress on the show, I told her. That I learned about the G spot from her, and she did this evil laugh, and she was so glad that uh, I learned it from her. She liked to be able to pop the cherry. No, she didn't. Well, oh yeah, I mean, so to speak, yes. I mean, she didn't pop my cherry, but yes, so to speak, yeah. When I found out about it. Mm hmm. Yeah, because I, I, it was just a term that I hadn't even heard about um, in sex ed class a few years before that. I was just like, I was just like, God, God, what's the G spot? I, I had to learn from some boys at school. And then um, I found out, yeah, then I found out um, as uh, years went by. And then once the internet came and stuff, I learned more about it. And then, of course, once I got, you know, experience and everything, once I lost more weight and stuff, then I was pretty set. And now, like, I'm kind of a, um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert completely on it and stuff, but I, 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 I know how to find it. Well, I mean, yeah, hopefully. I mean, we're like in our 30s now, so. Yeah, <laughs> Than when we were teenagers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't believe I can't believe I'm 35. I didn't even think I was going to get this far. Well, well we never believe that we're really going to age. I mean, we we acknowledge the fact that we're going to get older, but um, the actual aging process is a rude awakening for everyone. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's been three years since I've recovered from my accident, and I haven't had any sexual satisfaction, haven't even had anything since uh, my accident and everything, but um, I've just been focused on my career in show business and stuff. And... But, and there's there's some days when I just long for it, and then some days when I I don't. I feel like I'm in junior high again with all the masturbating I do. <laughs> well, you just giving yourself an extra workout. Yeah. I was I saw this video on YouTube though yesterday where they t- where they talk about how um, over masturbation causes um, depression and stuff and. I have been depressed. I thought it was mainly because I want to be in L.A. right now and not here in Reading. 
and everything, but it could also be caused by that. You know, scientists go by, you know, statistics, so you can be an outlier. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's always been that myth about um, about you losing hair if you do it too much and stuff. I have uh, lost a little bit more hair, too, coincidentally. Well, you know, men also tend to lose hair as they get older. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it is a coincidence. Who knows? But there are lots of things that doctors can prescribe to help them. So, I mean, that's a healthy problem. Yeah. Well, in the hospital, I lost a lot of hair. And um, I took, uh, after I got out of the hospital, I took biotin a lot. And it came back. And now my hairline's still starting to recede more. It's a strange little, strange little progression, progression there. Yeah, our bodies tend to do things we don't want them to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you're still the same handsome young man that I knew in high school, right? Oh, you'll have to say that. <laughs> I, I look, when I look at pictures of me from high school, I actually cannot believe how handsome I am and how much hair I had back then. No, I'm pretty sure everyone's like that. They're what? I'm pretty sure everyone says that. Oh, look at my high school picture. That's so slow and so pretty. Why did I know that? What the hell? Oh, you look so good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, true. <laughs> I go out and look in the mirror and I'm like, yeah, I could lose 30 pounds. Yeah. I, uh, have you t- uh, talked to anybody uh, that was on the team? Eric and I stay in contact. That's about it. Eric is weird. There, there are times when he's like, when he's like, unfriends me on Facebook and then he friends me again and shit. It's weird. Mm, I've been friends with Eric since oh, I had to have met him in either since elementary, but we at least went to middle school together. Um, yeah. I mean, we've known each other for 25 years or so. Yeah. Him and my, uh, him and my cousin. And, Y'all go ahead. No, uh, Eric and I, um, we're always very close and late, so we basically wrestled against each other for all those years. So we became fairly close. Yeah, I've known I've known Andreas for twenty five years. We went to summer school together in elementary school. Oh man, Andreas! Yeah, I haven't heard anything about him since. Well, I can tell you, uh, he's a San Francisco cop. Oh, a cop. Actually, I can figure him as a cop. Yeah. Um, I used, uh, oh my God. So I used to see him in San Mateo bars um, occasionally for, for years. It's been about about th- three or four years since I last saw him. And we used to see each other and just talk about the old days and stuff. And... He's a, he really is like a cop. He asks a lot of questions, I'll tell you. Well, I mean, that's his profession. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I won't meet up with him. Just me. No, no. Andreas is cool. I've always liked Andreas. He's cool. He's a lot, he's a lot cooler than his brother Victor, I'll tell you. Victor's kind of a dick. But, uh, I never met this family besides I think we had one meeting at his house. So, not a vivid memory. Uh, what, what memory? It's not, I, I don't remember his brother very well at all. I you know, wasn't very involved with him or his family. 
Oh yeah, he well he um he was class of 03 and he was on the soccer team and he hung out with all the jerks and stuff. But I, I do I do admire I do admire the guy cuz right after high school he came out of the closet and I admire that. Really? Mhm. Well, yeah. Well not Vic, well not Andreas his brother. But I, w- I will tell you this though, um, there was this girl that I met um, uh, when, when, when I was uh, when I was at when I was working at Swinging Door. He, uh, this girl, she was she was like really two faced and fake and stuff. Turns out she had went to um, uh, middle school with Andreas, and then I found out uh, later that Andreas was married to her for like a year or so after high school. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I think I won't comment on that one. Yeah, I thought <laughs> I thought that was hella funny. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I, I run into. I also run into guys that were on the team after I left and stuff. You know, like I seen uh, I seen uh, Gavin Schneider. Yeah. Yeah, I have to be honest, I didn't pay that much attention to the incoming freshmen when you were in the last year, that last year at San Mateo, when school got condemned and everything was... I mean, I only went to classes, I think, from 9 a.m. until 12 on my senior year. Mm-hmm. So I didn't feel like I was actually in school. Uh, that was, you know, senior year was a really dark year for me because all my friends who were older, you know, they they were gone, and I had friends that were a year younger and stuff, but all my friends in general were at Aragon, and the, oh my god, this the freshman class from our senior year, I, th- that was the beginning of uh, what we know nowadays as the, the millennial generation, and I had never seen a class that was so entitled and rude ever. And I was just stunned, you know? I was stunned. Well, our age group of people is quite unique. We grew up without an analog and, you know, look at things up in encyclopedias and all the old handy ways of learning. We were from the teenagers, we were not exploded. We had to adapt and learn a whole new set of being, which is to what we are today. Those millennials who grew up with that internet explosion. So, of course, they're going to have a different experience and lesson we are. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were like, oh, I'm a. Oh yeah, I'm a Britney girl. I'm a Justin Timberlake girl. All that stuff. It was just. It made me want to gag. <laughs> Yeah, but oh god, that was just that was just uh, a really weird class of just entitled shitheads. <laughs> and some of them were cool. Some of them were cool, and I see a lot of them and stuff that are, are that were really cool and everything. But there was just so many of them that were just oh my god. I was like, you know, class of ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand. They were they were just so cool, but. Oh, oh, four, oh, three was okay. They, they, I mean, that class was weird too. But like, oh, four was the beginning of it, just getting really, really bad. And oh, five had some had some of the same ones too. Well, I, I believe that the millennials are generation that will have the generations after them are going to see more things that we can do with current technology. They're going to be able to expand upon what we have. And they've grown up with their whole lives with it. So there's going to be one savant around somewhere that we're going to have a new Musk. We're going to have a new Bill Gates. And, you know, it's just the cycle of life. I'm excited to see what they invent and bring into our world. I hope they invent something good, you know. I mean, we had one. We had one really smart guy 
um, of our generation invent something good, and that's Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook. Wow, we're still waiting to see how that turns out. Oh, that guy, that guy is a, bil- a billionaire now. Yes, he is, and he's dealing with a whole lot of freedom of speech and privacy issues. Yep. Well, so the, well that kind of stuff was 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 liable to happen anyways. You know, I mean, I'm sure he didn't think some things through, but he was smart enough to create Facebook, you know. It's true. There were a lot of uh, competing social media that just went out. So. Yeah, I mean, I was reading an article about Tom from MySpace about how how MySpace just, you know, came and went within, you know, just under eight years and how it was, the, you know, it was the hottest social media site for two years and then Facebook just exploded and then people dropped off of MySpace. And now, like, the guy, he's, I forgot what it said he was doing now. He was working, he was working somewhere in an office or something. I'm like, man, that guy, that that guy, I feel sorry for him. You know, <laughs> he had the idea, but he didn't get the launch. Yeah, that was That's tough. That was tough. Yeah, <laughs> That's so sad. So how so how, how's your dad doing? Oh, my dad's doing great. He's fully retired. Um, I'm living up in Oregon now, and so is my brother, and mm-hmm. both of us have. I have a son, and he has two sons. So my parents are retired grandparents to those three kids, and they pretty much, you know, spend their extra time coming over and taking them out and doing things and enjoying their retirement and going over and playing cards with aunts and uncles. And I mean, they're basically living, you know, the dream at this point. I hope they are anyway. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I, I liked your dad very much uh, when we were working together at that place. And uh, I went, I, you know, I, I started going there again two years ago um, after after being away for like six years and stuff, after uh, being the owner, patched things up and everything. And um, the place the place has become kind of, str- has become much stranger than it already was. I mean... Uh, when, 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 we, when, when Warren first took over that place, you know, it, it took a little bit to, uh, build, um, uh, getting, you know, people in and stuff, you know, once he hired me, that, that all changed because I was constantly promoting it on MySpace and then Facebook and re- word of mouth spread. And that last month of Bay Meadows, like was the, was the beginning of it just being busy for like a whole year and a half straight until I left that place. But now it's just, it, it's got a, uh, a, a much different vibe and everything. Cause after I left, they went through several problems. There was a couple stabbings there. There was a couple issues with, um, with the, uh, ABCs and everything. And it's just, it's just a different vibe now. And a lot more douchebags are hanging around there, but it's still, it's, it's still the same place for the most part. Yeah, he was there for a long time too, huh? Oh, I don't remember how many years, but he was jumping through jobs before that. He had semi-retired to take care of me in high school, and um, then after I got my license and everything, kind of had to find something to fill his time. <laughs> yeah, I was just so uh, shocked when I saw you at that Christmas party and everything. Oh, I just, I, I, I would, I would never expect uh, uh, you and him to be related at that time. I guess. Well, I, for that. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was a weird time in and of itself for me. Everything I, I just had lost all that weight, and I was just starting my social life and everything. I just come back from Arizona. 
and there's a lot of drama going on in the family and everything. And I don't know how I, I don't know how I stuck it out and got through that experience and everything. And it was just the beginning of craziness that happened, which ultimately, ultimately led me to live on the streets for a while then uh, leading up to my accident. Yeah. There. Yeah. Well, we, me and my mother, we landed on our feet, and uh, we got this nice apartment over here in Reading until she retires, and then L.A. happens, and everything next spring. I'm pretty excited about that. Well, I wish you luck with that. I'm one of the best things. Yeah, I just want to get out there and stuff because I've I visited there a handful of times since then and I just I just want to make everything happen out there next few years because I'm not getting any younger you're not I mean that's where I'm getting younger well <laughs> just turning 21 again well I mean by like Hollywood standards I'm not getting any younger that's true. you know but there are lots of actors that you know, start late in life lots of, you know, entertainment people who did not make it as a young person. So, your shot isn't over. You still have it. Yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still a much bigger roll of the dice than it used to be, you know, but, yeah, you, you are right about that, you know. I mean, the, the, there are some people, I mean, their, their careers, you know, are just a fluke, you know, when they're a certain age, you know, older than... Um, the standard uh, normal age in Hollywood, and it's it's so rare and everything. But thank God for social media and the internet and everything that uh, people can, um, <laughs> you know, just about anybody can have a career uh, doing anything that they love. Well, if you're passionate about it, it'll show through on your work. Yeah, absolutely. And stuff. Uh, so, you got uh, anything planned uh, this week before you go on your trip? Well, yeah. The World of Warcraft expansion just landed, so I'm going to be playing that. The uh, Warcraft. Mm-hmm. I just I, I just play Nintendo. I, I go to maybe uh, two movies a year now because movies are not as good as they used to be. I'm hoping to change it um, when I get my break and everything with the, with the screenplays I write and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. And um, ten years ago and stuff, I was, uh, I was going to my, um, my, my, uh, my elementary school library librarian's house and uh, I was playing Warcraft um, – with her son, uh, who's like five years younger than me. I used to uh, be friends uh, with the other son, who was uh, two years younger than me uh, back in the day. And uh, we used to play Halo. You know Halo? Oh, of course. Yeah. We used to. Halo? Yeah. I was so terrible at that game. I was always getting killed, like right away and stuff. So that's why. Um, I decided to stick to Nintendo. My brother had a, an old school Nintendo game um, that has like over a hundred games on it, and all I play is Super Mario Brothers. That's the only N- Nintendo game I've ever been good at, so I just play that, and I I just love you know getting to all the levels and stuff, and just having fun with it. Yeah, Nintendo's kind of classic. 
I remember when we got the first Nintendo on the block and everyone had to come over and see it because video games, new things. But, I mean, Nintendo's a solid system. You've you got a wide range of how many games they've developed over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And stuff. And, uh, God, there's so many... There's so many game stores now, like, throughout the entire world. And my nephew, he goes to them all the time. And, yeah, so Nintendo... Nintendo is just still pretty cool and stuff. It's so it's so rare now, you know? Yeah, I got rid of my Nintendo well, probably when I left home. But it wasn't mine, it was the family's. And I never picked up another one. We have, like, a Xbox and our computer, which is what we mostly use. Although, I've been thinking about taking a dive and trying virtual reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I go to, um, there's, uh, every year at the mall, they got this, um, store, um, that, that has, like, um, that has, like, board games and calendars called, uh, Go, Go Board Games and cal- Calendars and stuff, and they're, they're so, and sometimes they have video games there, but they're very limited, you know, it's not like a normal, uh, game store where you can get everything, and stuff, but they got they got some there, but it's very limited. Well, I mean, I do enjoy some card games too. So, mm-hmm. game stores that are—I mean, since in the days that we have, the games are becoming more prevalent and part of our society. Yeah, my favorite card game is Cards Against Humanity. I love that game. Oh my god, you can do anything sick and twisted with that game. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time I played one of those games with some friends, and it was all new for every one of us. And we played, and at the end, it always kind of looked at each other and said, I want to play again. <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun. I love it. Yeah, the first time I played it was just a couple of years ago. Uh, I was at I was at a, a friend's house and stuff, and uh, we were just having a lot of fun playing it. And then about about a year or two later, um, I was at my friend's neighbor's place. I used to be friends with um, my friend's neighbors, and then for some strange reason, they just turned on me at the at the, at the drop of a hat, and I'll never understand why. But there there was this one night we were playing, and oh my god, just so many funny things were going on. Uh, with that game, and I remember they had um, they had this one girl over. I'm actually friends with her on Facebook, and I see things that she posts and stuff. And uh, she had her mother with her, who's in her early seventies, and they and they both smoke pot together. And she had oh my god, she had uh, joints with her. She had bongs. She had uh, bowls. And everything, she was just passing it around and stuff. And her mom was really, really cool. And she was German too. She was actually from Germany. Well, that's cool. I mean, as we get older, we find out more of what our parents did when they were younger. (laughs) To kind of keep that hidden for us when we're teenagers so that we hopefully go on the right path and don't do what they did. Oh God! I learned so much stuff about my parents. I don't. I still don't even want to know. <laughs> well, I mean, they're our parents. They weren't innocent either. Yeah. Especially not my father. Yeah. <laughs> There's stuff I learned. Oh my God! I just didn't want to learn. And then I picked up certain things from them that just. Oh my God! Makes me cringe when I think about it. <laughs> oh my God! So. <laughs> No. So I went to a 4th of July party with my family. Mm-hmm. And the guy that was hosting it was a medical marijuana patient. Mm-hmm. And I had had a mini pipe on me, and he, uh, we had gotten onto the subject, so he took me into the back room and stuffed my little pipe holder with a bunch of MJ. And uh, I went out to the party and, you know, started to the circle, and we were all smoking and everything. My father comes over, and he smokes it with as well. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, then my mother comes over and sees my father smoking pot. So, you're smoking pot. So where he gets this, you know, I'm cornered look on his face, looks around the group, and then points to me and says, well, it's her pipe. <laughs> Oh, I'll bet. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> I totally got sold out by my dad. Totally. Wow. Wow. Uh, I had my parents, you know, they told me from the time I was little, if they ever caught me doing any kind of drugs, I get my ass kicked. So I never got caught. Wow. I guess you were more careful than I was. <laughs> well, that and plus... I had I had too many superficial friends that I didn't hang out with on a deep level during those years and stuff, so it's not like they came over all the time and we did that stuff, you know. It wasn't one of those situations. It was it was just like later on and stuff, especially when I got to CSM a year after high school. Um, at that time, you know, there was no security all over the place, so, like, you could smoke pot, like, right there in the middle of the court and everything, and that's what we all did and stuff, and I'll never forget the one day I did it, and Rusty Higby, um, (laughs) he was, like, I don't know, I don't know, 30 feet away with some guys, and, like, I I, I started smoking, right, and I I look, and I see him, and he's, like, jumping up and down with excitement, like oh my god I can't be- I can't believe he's he's doing it I can't believe it and then like every time I saw him at like at like San Mateo football games after that I always has to bring it up. <laughs> well, you probably broke his ideal of what you were and what you did. I'm pretty sure that most people would have brain blades if they met me today. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Man, God, those 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 were some fun times. Those were fun times that will never happen again, at least not in that capacity. No, and you remember them, and they make you smile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what, uh... So, yeah. So what are you doing for the rest of your day? Awesome, awesome. That's so awesome. Well, I, th- I think this, this this turned out pretty good, don't you think? No, it was nice talking to you, Tommy. Oh, yeah, and stuff. Let's let's do this again. All right. All right. Well, you have fun playing um, your uh, your video games and stuff. I will. <laughs> have a good day, Tommy. You too. Okay, bye. Well, there you have it. Helena Day. Ain't she a sweetheart? Thank you so much, Helena. You were a lot of fun catching up and reminiscing and stuff about the old times. Um, If you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.